I'm here because I have followed what has been happening in Camp Ashraf in recent weeks with mounting uh, shock and a degree of despair. Um, I know that um, there has been very, very little publicity in the United Kingdom, and I'm bemused, frankly, by the reason why this story has been whispered from journalist to journalist, but not featured as a major humanitarian scandal um, in the United Kingdom media. Um, it seems to me that um, whatever undertakings were given by the Iraqi government to the American government when the security of Camp Ashraf was um, ceded to the Iraqi government have plainly been broken. I'm given to understand that um, at the time of the events, which you will see in a few moments in the film, which I have already seen incidentally, um, there were American troops stationed in Camp Ashraf who did nothing whatsoever. <laughs> But I want to make it clear that although I am a human rights lawyer working for women, this is about all people, men and women and children. And it's also about the hunger strikers who are so bravely risking their own health and lives in this country. And I feel humbled when I see that you three people are here today who have been on hunger strike for, I think, as much as 22 days. And I almost feel that we should be joining you, and that if we ourselves would join you in hunger strike, maybe we could shake our own politicians and our own media into being more responsive to the terrible situation in Ashra. And I feel particularly humbled today to be in the presence as has been acknowledged of the hunger strikers. And I want to pay homage not just to your courage, but what strikes me as what must motivate you more than anything else is your love. As a Christian, I believe Jesus told us, greater love has no one than to lay down their life for their friends. And that is what you are risking doing. That is what you are prepared to do. And so I want to honor not just your courage, but the great love that you show for your relatives and your loved ones and your fellow country women and country men who are in Ashraf at the moment. And God bless you all and all those whom you love and for whom you pray. My Baroness, ladies, gentlemen, we all watch what happened on 28th of July 29th and 30th of July in Camp Ashraf. I cannot say anything more. I cannot add anything more. One of those 1,000 women in Ashraf is my sister. They're all my sisters. I cannot accept, personally, I cannot accept this kind of violence in 21st century. We are talking about civilization, but inaction is different. My name is Khalil Shahrukhi. Uh, three months ago, I get the visa from Iraqi embassy, and I went to visit my three sister one brother and two cousin in Ashraf city. One of my cousin at the moment, uh, uh, it's on hand of Iraqi soldier. His name is Ahmad Tajgardan. But uh, the soldier of, Iraqi soldier didn't let me to see any of my family. 
And from that time, I had a feeling there's going to be a big disaster. After two days, when I was, I had 10 days visa, but by force, the Iraqi soldier sent me back to Baghdad, and I returned to England. Since I saw the pictures of the Ashraf, I'm father of two small children. I've got my own business, and I have a, I had a normal life, and I was enjoying. But I can't see these things happening to my friends, to those people in Ashraf. And I start hanging struck, and I will continue to The Ashraf people get the rights, or I will die in front of the USA embassy. Maybe some, the end of the day, maybe some of the eyes will be open. My name is Sudabe. I'm 19 years old. I am the youngest person who I am in hunger strike. I used to uh, be a student in Manchester, but when I have heard about Ashraf residents and a crime against humanity in Ashraf, I came to uh, London to as a volunteer working for case of Ashraf. I am from Iran two years ago, and uh, I lost my uncle in Iran. My uncle was a simple student of university just for participate in a peaceful demonstration, regime executed him. And what's happening in Ashraf is similar situation in Iran. I'm here today to ask uh, the US government why they are in silence. And I would like to ask to David Miliband, Foreign Secretary, why they are in silence. And I'm in hunger strike till they take action. As my colleagues and my friends told, maybe we died in front of U.S. Embassy, but maybe they take action, and we would like they take action. Uh, and we would like also 36 people who are on hostage be free immediately, because their life is in danger. Probably they send them back to Iran, and definitely they will be executed. I would like to thank you all to listen to my word. Salam Ashraf, we've had a meeting today to see how we can all help you and we are all of us going to do everything we possibly can. The one thing that you must always remember is you will never be and are not forgotten by us or any of us and all of us know a lot of people who can help you. I wish I was there with you. I have wanted for so long to be in Ashraf. I feel for you. I weep for you. I will do everything I can to get this barbarity to stop and to have you protected and safe and living as you were living in this equitable and just society, which is actually a model for human rights and community living across the world.